Hi and welcome to Stronical. This is a work in progress of something I've been promising for around about a year and a half. Maybe it's even two years, I can't remember. It's certainly been a while. But a long time ago, uh, in a galaxy... No, not quite that. But a long time ago anyway, I promised I would... Oh, I wrote a library that would use the DAC output of the SP32. It's called DAC Audio and it provided a really easy interface so you could output digital sound on an ESP32. It had its limitations. It was only 8-bit resolution and it could only do mono sound. So, yeah, the quality wasn't quite there. So, I said I would convert it to R squared S. And if you've followed me over the last few months, you know I've done quite a bit of work on R squared S, done some nice tutorials. But I kept putting it off, converting this to R squared S. Anyway, this is now the work in progress. Let's roll the titles and we'll tell you more about it. Is that it? Okay, yeah, so as just mentioned, I wrote the DAC Audio software. Nice little library, I'm fairly proud of it. Uh, it was easy to use to put sound on and control the sound on. There were quite a lot of useful functions. It could mix sounds, so, and it could mix many sounds together. I think somebody tried maybe eight, ten sounds, and that didn't stress the project. It was fine, it could do that, it does that. This is a work in progress. You will not find a link down below to the library, to the software I'm going to demo to now because I want to get it pretty much all completed. I want the equivalent of the deck audio library but working with R squared S. And at the moment it will play 16-bit sound of any sampling uh, frequency. So whether it's 8,000 samples per second or 16,000 or even CD quality 42,100 I think it is, isn't it, for CD quality. It will support up to CD quality, up to 42,100 samples per second. And you can throw any sort of sample rate at it. You don't need to do anything. You just put the sound in there. It'll work all right what the actual sampling frequency is and it'll like put it correctly. So let's have a listen to this. So this is actually plugged in. It's got a demo on it that demonstrates the fact that it is in stereo. So when I press the reset button, it'll boot it again because the demo runs for about 30 seconds and stops. And, well, you'll hear it. I'll press it. I'll press it. Side, left, side. Now, it might not be obvious to you, but this is saying side left, so this is the left channel. And this is saying side right. For you, you won't be able to tell. However, what I can do is I'll just reset it again to make sure it starts from the beginning again. I can unplug one. So if this is the right channel. I can hear this coming out of here, the right, where it says side right. So I'll unplug that, and then we'll all near the left. So let's just reset. Side, left, side, left. Then we've got a pause where it's playing side right, but obviously nothing's coming out. And then back to side left. So I'll put this back on. I shall get some side rights in a second. Left, side, left. If I can get it back on, my fingers are far too big to side, done it. Let's give a quick reset. Side, left, side, left, side, right, and now let's right, plug right, the left side. side. Yeah, left stop playing. Side, right, and we've just got the right side. Right. So here you go. This is the basic example. Very simple, you can see, not many lines. This is virtually identical to the example you get with the DAC Audio library. And it should be, because I'm, I'm trying to do a direct replacement. So we've got the main R squared S class here. We're creating an object of it called R squared S Audio. We've got to pass it some parameters of the pins we're going to use for the R squared S on the SP32. You can see the definitions I've used here. Data right 25, the uh, bit clock 27, and left right clock 26. This bit here is the number of the R squared S we're going to use. There are two available in the ESP32. We're going to use zero. You could have used one there if you wish to. So we then want to have something to play. So we've got a WAV file stored uh, in data in the program itself. So it's going to be put onto the actual ESP32. We're not reading it from an SD card. That, has, that is something that's to come in the future. Uh, but we pass it the address of the data there, stereo test wav, and we create an object of type wav class there, and we're calling it stereo test because it's that left right left right thing we've just been listening to. So this data is stored in this tab here, sound data, and there it is. This is all the left right left right wav data stored in there, which also contains uh, some header information, the first forty odd bytes or so that tells it the sample rate, and whether it's stereo, or mono, and other bits and bobs. So we've created that object there, stereo test, passing it that. 
This is all identical to the D'Accordio. We're then here saying we're going to repeat it because once it's played once, it will stop. We can set a setting to repeat forever if we wish, but I've decided to just repeat it two more times. So you can see the description there. I'll play it once, then repeat two more times because that is how many more times you're going to repeat it, not number of plays. So altogether, that would play three times. And then we play that sound. So we use the I squared this audio object and we say play and we pass it the object here. And it'll start playing it. Ignore the time in millis. That's from another example, uh, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes. We'll just take it out of there for now. Should have done that earlier, but you know. And then we come down to your loop where you would put your main core for whatever your project is doing, that amazing whatever it is, thing me bob. You would be putting your code in there, but as well as your code in that main loop, you need to have that in there at the moment. In the old deck audio software, you had to have it there, have it there. And basically that's taking care of filling that R squared S buffer with your data. So it has to periodically be called to be able to refill the buffer and make sure it's all tippity boo and all full to the top and the brim. However, I never liked that, never liked it. And in my very original early prototype of deck audio, it didn't have it. But for various technical reasons, I had to bring it in. However, we don't have to have it for the R squared S version so in the future that'll be going and you just left your main loop you'll click play there you'll, you'll, you'll tell it to play wherever there in the setup if you want or whatever in the main loop wherever you want to play sound you would put that line and play your sound and then whatever your main chord goes in there and yeah hopefully you've written it a little bit better than what i've just done let's get rid of that gibberish but for now we need it and as i said i won't be releasing the source code for this for a little while, and when I do, yeah, you won't need this in there, but for now, for the demos, we do. Right, this is the second example we're going to just listen to after I've gone through the code. We just introduced a second WAV called Blaster. It's a laser blaster. I think it's from Star Wars. In fact, I know I got it from a Star Wars site somewhere or other. I forget whose laser blaster it is. It might have been Han Solo's, who knows? And again, it's stored in here. It's a little bit further down. If I search for Blaster, we'll find the definition for that. There it is. Close that down. So again, the WAV file stored in here. I'm not going to go through any of this, how you store WAV files. It's exactly the same as I covered in the previous videos, my DAC audio software, but it's also beyond the scope of this quick video here as well. You'll notice that this one is an 8,000 hertz sample rate. It's 16 bit, two channel again, but this is 8,000 hertz. This one, the original, left, right, left, right, left, right, was 16,000 hertz. So we've got two completely different sample rates, but my little old clever software, um, kind of blowing me on trumpet a bit too much there, aren't I anyway, but the, this the software, and originally the deck audio software itself as well, could mix together different samples of any sample rate. That's one of the biggest advantages. Most libraries you'll see, they're gonna to have to be the same sample rates, the same number of bits, everything in order to get them to even mix. And most libraries I've seen, and certainly when I did mixing a few weeks ago, months ago now before Christmas, even when I did an example of how to mix MP3s, was it, or WAVs, whatever I was mixing together a few months ago, even then I had to keep it at the same sample rate because I was using somebody else's library. And they're just not capable of mixing different sounds together. In fact, they're not capable of mixing different sounds full stop. I had to add extra code in. But weren't capable of mixing different sounds at different sample rates. DAC Audio was always capable of this because I wanted to be able to have maybe background music at a higher quality and then little simple game sounds that you might have, whether it's a laser blaster or an explosion, whatever. You can reduce the quality on that so you could fit them all on the ESP32's memory. But obviously we, the, the quality is reduced, but we still want to mix them together, even though they're at dramatically different sample rates. You know, that is twice the laser blaster rate. I squared, Audio has inherited the DAC Audio's ability to do that because I've used the same code base. So we'll have a look at what we do. So again, we, this is just the same as last time. We're playing the stereo thing. We're taking a quick check of the time there and storing it. So we're getting the millis, how many, how many thousands of seconds have ticked over since the uh, ASP32 is powered on. And we're storing it in there. That's just so we can play the blaster sound every three seconds. So we've got our normal full buffer, which I explained a few minutes ago, which won't be in the final version, but we have to have it for now. And this is the bit that does it every three seconds. So if the current 
millis, thousands of seconds since startup, is more than whatever the time was, plus 3,000, then we must have gone over three seconds since we last played it, and we'll play it. And there it goes, play the blaster sound. And then we'll reset the time to the current time now. So every three seconds, the blaster will play, and it will automatically mix them in. In the old deck audio software, you could tell it not to mix an override or sound. That will be available in this one as well. All the abilities of the deck audio will be available in this one. So we'll go back and we'll do the demo of this. Okay, you've seen the software for that. So in a minute, I've just got my finger pressing the reset button down so it doesn't keep playing the laser blaster sign. So the laser blaster sign, if you remember, look at the code, that will play on and on and on every few seconds. So I'll let go, it'll do side right, side left, etc. with the laser blast coming in as well. Side, left, side, left, side, left, side, left, side, right, side, left, side, right, side, left, side, right, side, left. Okay, so that's probably enough of that. We'll just turn that off. So yeah, that is it for this quick episode. It's work in progress. The rest of the code will not be as hard as what I've, ha I've just had to do to do this. So that will roll in pretty quickly. So I'm hoping, obviously, work is... As always in real life, always very busy and gets in the way of all the fun stuff you want to do, don't you? But you still got to pay the bills. Anyway, um, hopefully we'll get some more updates. At least I'll do updates as I do anything more significant. So the next thing I want to work on is it being able to handle uh, routines that aren't quite in there yet as well. Like it, you could play simple music on this with notes and it can make it sound like a piano or a harpsichord, etc. Things like that. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, I'm available on odyssey.com as well. If you want to have an ad-free experience, and you'll find absolutely no adverts on there. And it's all a thing that's supported. I mean, I did a video, and other people have done a video about it. But it's all supported by the library credit blockchain. But basically, go along to odyssey.com. Odyssey There'll be a link in the description down below. You can watch all my videos uh, in 1020p, 30, 30, in, in lots of P anyway, uh, all advert-free. So pop along there, maybe join up. That'd be great. Catch you next time. Oh, not yet. Catch you next time. Thank you as well. I might have already said it. Thank you very much for watching. If you like it, thumbs up. If you want to see some more, whack an old subscribe on there. That'd be cracking. And thanks very much for those that patronise me and those that patronise me on Patreon. Catch you later. Till next time. Side, left, side, left. Shut up. Stupid side, darn thing. Right.